Welcome back to the channel. I'm Trabin, and it took till the very last day of 2023, but I did it! I succeeded in reading 365 books over the course of last year, an average of one book a day. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about it. To be clear, this video is purely going to be stats about reading a book a day for 2023. How did I, how did this start? Why did I decide to read 365 books for this last year? And what did I learn from it? Will I ever do it again? So um, if you're looking for more of a wrap up and um, uh, like what really stood out to me this year, ha having read that many books, I will have another video uh, later in the week, but this one is purely just to talk about the process of going through and reading a book a day and just numbers and statistics about what did I read this year. So to start with, how did all this begin? So I knew that my reading for 2023 was going to be very high. My numbers were going to be high because I was rereading re One Piece. And at the time that I started last year, uh, One Piece was already at over 100 volumes. So 100 books out of the year were going to be just one series. Um, at some point in the year, I had gotten way ahead of my reading goal. I think it was set to 200 or something like that. And so uh, I was like maybe... 15 books ahead or something like that and so I put in well what if I was at 250 books maybe I need to adjust this a little bit because I'm clearly reading a lot um, and then just as kind of a joke I put in 365 books and I can't recall if I was a little bit over that at the time or a little bit under that at the time but it was very close and so it was already later into the year, I want to say. Maybe it was uh, summertime or just before school let out. And so I decided that I would try for a book a day and try for 365 books over the course of the year. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about what I felt about that. Like, how did that affect my reading for this year? Um, but for now, I just want to talk about some statistics of reading that many books. So um, I have the numbers here. So of my 365 books, uh, 71 were novels. I read nine nonfiction books. I read one play, four short story collections, 97 comics and 183 manga. I expected the comic books and the manga to be a higher ratio than the novels, obviously. I can usually get through a trade paperback or uh, a tonkabon, a, a, a manga collection, in about an hour. And so reading several a day is not out of the question. Uh, and so obviously those were going to be a greater proportion than the novels and just the literature side. I am surprised to see that even taking away the comics and the manga, I still read 85 books this year. Uh, my goal before 2022 was 70 books, and that was just counting novels, not counting manga and things like that. So to get up to 85, I'm still happy with that. Toward the end of the year, I was averaging about seven novels a month, and I was really proud of that. So that was all good to see, even though, like I said, I knew the manga and the comic books were going to be an overwhelming majority of the reads for the year. I also dug into audiobooks more this year than I have in the past, partially because of 
the need to always be reading and trying to keep up with this uh, frantic pace at some points. Um, I did my best to adjust the times. So I went back through my Libby app and looked at all the audiobooks that I've read this year and saw how much time each of them was. And then I adjust, adjusted it somewhat because I tend to listen to audiobooks somewhere between 1.5 and 2x speed in most cases, so much slower than my reading speed if I just do 1x speed. There were a couple of exceptions this year, um, in particular Neil Gaiman's American Gods, which was a full cast recording. I felt like I really need to listen to that one at 1x speed. And so to average out my reading time of audiobooks, I did divide the number of total time by 1.75. And I still ended up with 175 hours of reading time for 2023, or just over seven days, 7.3 days. So that was pretty surprising to see, like over a week of just solidly listening to audiobooks. Um, I think that audiobooks are going to become a regular fixture in my reading from now on, uh, where they weren't in the past. I really enjoy going through the Libby app and trying to find something that I'm interested in, um, hearing the different qualities of the audiobooks, um, and just being able to have access to more books, uh, having access to a book in a moment if I'm just needing something to read or something to listen to for a while. And it helps with like something to do while I'm shopping for groceries or um, running errands in the car, things like that. So I think that is one positive thing to come out of this is um, an increased appreciation and increased use of audiobooks. Let's move on to star ratings off of Goodreads for this year. So this year I gave 190 five-star ratings, 129 four-star ratings, 44 three-star ratings, two two-star ratings, and I didn't give anything below a two. Now I know for myself that I tend to rate books pretty high. I feel like I know what I want to read, I know what's going to appeal to me, and I don't tend to pick up books based solely on hype. Um, I tend to only read or continue to read those books that are interesting to me. A lot of the things I read are series. When you get deep enough into a series, it's hard for a single volume to really crash down to a, re a very low level. If you look at something like One Piece or uh, something is Killing the Children, even, which is only at like six volumes. Um, something like Miss Marvel. These properties, characters, and these properties that I've followed for, in some cases, years or decades, um, even if a volume, a particular volume is subpar, you can usually find something in there that is interesting and appealing and fun and new. And so they tend not to ever drop super low in my estimation because they play some role in a larger story. Overall, I think my average rating for books in 2023 was something along the lines of like a 4.3. And even I feel like that's pretty high. Going back and looking at my list at the end of the year, I did feel like a few of the titles probably should have been lower. I imagine if I revisited some of my reads and really thought about them or reflected on them a few months later, those numbers might go down a bit. But I still feel like overall, most of what I read this year was entertaining. Most of what I read this year was fun. And so I don't think it would slip that far. All right, let's talk about some uh, lengths of books. So I read uh, 84,239 pages this year. It averages out to 230 pages a day, 
which because I was reading a book a day means that's about, you know, average, that's about what I did every single day, 230 pages. So pretty happy with that. The shortest book I read this year was Defending Elysium. I didn't even pick this book up. It is available on uh, Sanderson's website for free. Um, but according to Goodreads, it is a 43 page book. The longest book I read was Words of Radiance, the second Stormlight Archives book, which is also a Sanderson book, which I find pretty funny. So both my shortest book and my longest book were from the same author. Goodreads also lets you know what is the most shelved book that you have. So basically like most popular and what's the least shelved book you have. So for the most shelved book or the most popular, most talked about book I read this year is uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is actually a reread for me. Uh, I read this back in high school, I want to say, and I picked it up again this year just because it's been a while since I read it. It was really entertaining um, and also a lot shorter than I remember it being. So I'm definitely going to continue uh, picking up the rest of this series in 2024 and taking a look at them. Uh, this was shelved, I think, over 3 million shelves. So it's a lot of popularity. A lot of people are reading and talking about this one. My least shelved book, my least shelved book is the King of Hell series, which has been shelved zero times, meaning that uh, no one has ever, according to Goodreads, uh, no one's ever put this on a shelf. No one's ever said that they wanted to read this or that they have read it. Um, and kind of unsurprising because it is kind of a, a middling manhwa series uh, from the early 2000s, I want to say. Um, and it is something that I'm going to be unhauling in the future. So uh, no surprise there. It was fine. But uh, I was not surprised to hear that this is the least shelf book. But it's not actually the most obscure book, in my opinion, that I read this year. That would have to go to the Grand Chronicle, because the Grand Chronicle doesn't even have an entry on Goodreads. This book does not have an ISBN. As far as Goodreads is concerned, this book does not exist. And what this book is, uh, I've mentioned it, I think, on my wrap-up video before, uh, but what this book is, is the fictional history of a card game's mythos. So. Level 99 Games puts out a couple of different card games and, and board games that all take place in the world of Endines. And this Grand Chronicle is the history of that fictional world. So it's incredibly niche, um, which is a real shame because I really liked this book and there's literally no one to talk to about it. Um, it was just a really cool, uh, not mixed media, but it uses a bunch of different uh styles in recounting the history of this world so i thought it was really neat and yeah and i think this is actually the most obscure book that i read in 2023 what did i learn from this experience and would i ever do this again so one thing i learned is that i can find time to read and that was a really important thing for me that was a very positive outcome from the reading a book a day challenge of 2023. Um, would I ever do it again? Maybe, but I'm certainly not doing it next year. Um, I've already set my reading goal for 2024. It's going to be 200 books. Again, I'm averaging about seven novels a month, and there are a couple of other things I want to do with uh, manga that I'll talk about in some other videos coming up. I think I would do 365 books again at some point, but I don't think it's something I can sustain for multiple years. I think it's going to have to be something that I just occasionally try. And it did feel at times like a second job, especially when I would get behind on the reading because you check in on Goodreads and every day it's you have to read another book, you have to read another book, you have to read another book. Um, and so when work gets very busy, especially toward the end of the semester, and um, 
there was lots of other stuff going on where I just couldn't find the free time. I think I got to, I think at the worst, I was like uh, 17 books behind schedule. And that's just a really rough hole to feel like you have to pull yourself out of. And like, it was a self, it it was a self imposed challenge. Like nothing was going to happen to me if I didn't, if I didn't finish it, but this was happening in December and it really felt like, well, you've made it so far. You, you gotta, you gotta pull through and finish this. So I feel like there's some, there's some stress to setting the bar that high. And so while I would do it again, it's not going to be anytime soon. Again, so the some positives that come out of it. I am glad that I found time to read that much. Um, I had a lot of like book recommendations to give people and like a lot of books to talk to my coworkers and my friends about. Getting into audiobooks was a good result from this experiment or from this challenge. And so yeah, I feel like there are some good things. It's just not something that I want to do all the time. And that's going to wrap up this video, taking a look back at my Goodreads challenge for 2023. Um, I hope that your reading journey is going well. I hope that you found some value or entertainment out of this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Help us build this corner of our booktube community. And until the next one, take care.